almost all, uh, all of these trumpeters were uh, African American. Uh, you said they came from the bowels of the cla of the caste system. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but do you feel you came from the bowels of the caste system? No, I don't. I don't. Not at all. By 1961, I mean, when I was born, it was not like Louis Armstrong's. The, w the caste system was still in place. I grew up largely in segregation, but it wasn't the same. My father had a college degree. My mother had also a college degree. As Louis Armstrong, man, I mean, it's, it's, it's speculated that his mother was a prostitute. He didn't really grow up with his father. He grew up in the worst neighborhood. He was sent to a boy's home when he was uh, 11, or tw I think 11 years old. And that's actually how he learned how to play the trumpet, because he, he shot a gun on the 4th of July. And uh, they lived in a very different different type of world. Well, he went to uh, the White House, and he told Eisenhower that in the South they were violating <laughs> the Constitution. Right, well, I mean, he Face just, to face. Right, just because that's the, another thing about America is, as always, Frederick Douglass met with Abraham Lincoln. Yeah. So our way of life is very fluid. and. Uh, so we always had the sense of the possibility, and of course I was uh, uh, growing up during the civil rights movement, so I was always very conscious of the struggles that were taking place to ensure that there was a level of equality. Now the, envir the environment I grew up in was very much the old South, so it was not, in, in no way was it equal. So it was very much like the old segregated kind of way of looking, but there was in the air the feeling of hopefulness and the sense that people were working together to do it. And because my father was a jazz musician, I understood that it was not an issue of black versus white. It was black and white versus white. And that makes a big difference. And jazz musicians generally were always on the cutting edge of integration. And from an intellectual standpoint, they never endorsed really supremely nationalistic ways of thinking that were antithetical to the, the highest of the American principles and ideas and the highest levels of humanism. Somebody like Louis Armstrong was not representing separatism from people or superiority of the black man. Duke Ellington was not representing that. Charlie Parker was not representing that. Thelonious Monk. They were on too high a level of consciousness. And with my father being in that lineage, uh, I would always see him in the barber shop or somewhere during periods of extreme nationalism, arguing that when it was not a popular view, arguing for integration in America, arguing for equality of all people not being what you, what you would consider to be anti-white, but not Uncle Tarman or acting like everything is cool in the country, but definitely not going in the other direction into the type of uh, kind of absurd philosophical direction that many people were going in. So the message was we're all in this together. Right. Uh, yes. Now, uh, you made the statement, I think, in one of your lectures that uh, once you let freedom loose, there's no telling where it'll go. <laughs> right. <laughs> what what right. do you mean by that? <laughs> I mean, I think it plays out most in your, in your family, in your family system. You educate your kids, you want to teach them what you can teach them, you want to give them opportunities <coughs> and experiences, and you want to give them the freedom to develop their own person. Well, one of the first things they're going to do is counterstate what you want. So now you let freedom go with them, you didn't keep them under thumb, now they're telling you you're wrong about something you really believe in. And what do you do? you squash them? Do you make them not have their independence and their freedom? Or do you then figure out how am I gonna negotiate this terrain with this new thinking or with this new, and I think a lot of the movements we see in our, in our culture and our society has to deal with how do we balance what we think to be true, which we never know, we think something, and the fact that when, you, when other people are free to express themselves and come up with things and be creative, they will strongly counterstate your sense of the world. 